Okay, so the Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 5 are very small single board computers, but they are quite chunky when it comes to thickness. And so what that means is if you want to build it into a slimmer build, you need something like the Compute Module 5. So this is much, much slimmer, has unique connections on the base here to connect to boards, and it means that you can use all sorts of custom boards with it. This game's console is based on the Raspberry Pi 4, and so you can see that because of that, it's pretty chunky. This is a Raspad 3 tablet, which was designed for a Raspberry Pi 4, uh, but there's a Raspberry Pi 5 in there at the moment, and it's running Android 15. But as you can see, it is unbelievably thick. And if we hold the Compute Module 5 next to it, you can see that it's tiny. Plenty of room inside it. In the past I've tested these two, so this is for a Compute Module 4 and a Compute Module 5, and as you can see, they're pretty much the same size as a Raspberry Pi 4 and a Raspberry Pi 5. Same sort of thickness with the USBs, so it doesn't really lend itself too much to going inside cabinets. But I've just been sent the CM5 Nano A and Nano B. They both come with these GPIO pins. And they are the same size as a Compute Module 5 or Compute Module 4. So to compare it to a Raspberry Pi 5, they are much, much smaller. And thickness-wise, this one doesn't have an HDMI output, but it does have two display outputs. So if you were using it with a small display, like the Pi Boy, it means we can get much slimmer. And all they do to fit them is basically to marry up the connections. So this way around. and pop them together. So that's all you've got to accommodate inside your device. Here it is again next to a Raspberry Pi 5. Now the Raspad uses an HDMI connection so I'm going to have to use this inside if I'm going to try and fit it inside it. And because it's so small there's, there's no actual attachments to fit it on here. Obviously you can use the GPIO pin sometimes but you're really going to be mounting the board into something because it's got the four mount holes and you've still got a bit of thickness here to have screws inside here. So I plugged it all in, I've got an ethernet cable, USB-C to power it, I've got the mouse keyboard which is the USB there and also I've got a mini to HDMI adapter and just to show I'm using the Nano B board the Nano A board doesn't have HDMI out, so it makes it harder for me to capture from it. Although it does have those two display connections, so I could use a portable display with it. Uh, and there's the Raspberry Pi 5, just to show that size comparison. I also thought it'd be interesting to see if it uses less power. So this Tapo plug allows me to show the wattage of a device. So I thought I might uh, play a YouTube video, see how much power this is drawing compared to a Raspberry Pi 5, to see if you get a better battery life in like a tablet or something like that. But before I do that, let's have a look at Amazon to show the differences between them. So in the UK, the baseboard B is £24 and the baseboard A is £19.99. I guess it would be just cheaper because you're not paying for an HDMI. Uh, also, you haven't got the audio jack on it. So if we go for the baseboard A, so let's go for some close-ups here. Suitable for evaluating the Raspberry Pi CM5 or being integrated into end products and you can use either the light or the EMMC drive. I'm running this from an SD card because this is the light model. I do like it with GPIO pins when they put the colors on. So you tend to find that the yellow is three volt and the red is five volt, and I find that quite handy for connecting fans and things like that. Nice that it still has a fan connector, and it's the same fan connector as you get on a Raspberry Pi 5. So USB-C, SD card slot, the two either camera or display slots, that's a single USB-A connection, real-time clock connection. So we can see from this, we've got USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A. So it's nice that it's a fast USB connection. And also it's running on 5 volt. And it's suitable for all Compute Module 5s. This slide's got all the dimensions on it. And the USB-C socket on this can be used for writing to the EMMC drive or for powering the unit. Obviously I'm using it to power the unit at the moment power button and boot button. So it says press before powering on and release after powering on to enter burning mode. It talks about the CM5 IO logic level being 3.3 volt or 1.8. And then we go to the baseboard B. 
let's go straight to that connections one because that's really useful so we've got four which is other function pins support for extended functions mini HDMI supports up to 4k same boot and power button three and a half mil audio jack certainly useful if you're making a portable audio device and again we've got USB 3.2 gen 1 and if you haven't had a CM5, uh, when they talk about the onboard boot button to put it into that mode where it can be flashed, you also need to install some extra software. I've already done it in my version of KDE Plasma, but if you're doing it on ordinary Raspberry Pi OS, you need to install RPI boot. And Jeff Geerling's got a good guide on how to install RPI boot. That's what I use to install it into my version of KDE Plasma. So you can see all the details are here. And when it's in that boot mode, you can use Raspberry Pi OS to write the operating system. Right, let's just run the effects just to show what CM5 I've got. Uh, and again, I am running this from an SD card. So it's going to be a bit slower, but if we type in NeoFetch, so Compute Module 5 Lite Revision 1, and this is the yeah 2 gig model. So Lite means no EMMC drive, so it's got no onboard storage, just like a Raspberry Pi 5. So let's shut this down. Plug in my little Tapo power plug. These plugs are so handy. They actually act as timers as well. So I've got one that comes on and charges at cheap rate my electric car and also charges my iPad and various other things at night when it's on a much cheaper rate. So that's just starting up. I just log into the desktop and uh, if I find the Watts app, so I need to find which device it is. So I guess it's this one. No, current power zero. Oh, it's this one. Current power four watts, just booting up the operating system. So what I'll do is run YouTube at 1080 and see what sort of power it draws. So let's just play a bit of this video. So 1080 and full screen. So it's on five watts of power at the moment. So very, very little usage playing a 1080 YouTube video. Very impressive. Let's shut it down and boot it up on a Pi 5. I need to disconnect the fan connector so it's a fair test. So the fan's not going to use any extra power. Switch back from mini HDMI to micro. So it already seems to be using an extra 1 watt. It's on 5 watts before I even started up YouTube. Yeah, 7 watts it's on. So it is using more power on a Raspberry Pi 5. So with even less components, does that mean that the Nano Board A will use less power again? Now my power plug isn't that accurate, so I'm not going to be able to tell tiny amounts. But I guess it would be, because there's so little on here. And I've just been looking at the back of the two boards, and one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that the Nano B board supports PCIe, so you can actually add an NVMe drive or something else via PCIe. I'm not sure why we've got a Wi-Fi symbol on the bottom of this one. Maybe for antennas? So I can't get Raspberry Pi Connect to work at the moment, which is what I wanted to use to play a YouTube video remotely. Uh, I can SSH into my Pi, so you can see it's running, and if I run something like HTOP, it's, it's up and running. Let's go full screen with this. So this is my Pi running, uh, not playing a YouTube video. But if I tap it, it will show me how many watts it's using. So it's currently using 2 watts. So I reckon my theory is correct. You know, less connections is going to use less power. So if I do Control c that will quit out of this. And then I can launch NeoFetch to show that it's running. And again, if I tap that, this will show me a detailed view of how many watts it's using. So 5 volt. 2 watts, 1.5 and 2 watts. So I've got it running with the other board, so this is the HDMI board, but I did have to plug in the HDMI into my monitor and sign in to Raspberry Pi Connect, which is what I've done here. So you can see uh, that is part of the process of me signing in. Uh, and if I was to call up the web browser, just to show that it's working, so this is this device connected via Wi-Fi, but I'm remotely accessing it on the same network with my MacBook. So if I go to YouTube and let's play a video on that just to see how many watts that was going to use. Full screen, so it's more like my Pi. And if I do Lee PSP video HDR, 
Let's play that same YouTube video. It's going to be jerky because it's doing it via remote access, but it's more how many watts is it using when it's playing a 1080 video full screen. So it's 1080 YouTube full screen. So it's currently using five watts of power through this power bank, four and a half watts. I showed the Raspad earlier on, so this is a Raspberry Pi tablet, and there is a Pi 5 in here at the moment. So let's see how it fits. So connections wise, cable's wrong because this has got micro HDMI, USB-C is fine, although the orientation of the USB-C is here and then the HDMI is up here, so it could, yeah, to be fair, it would go. The Ethernet's completely in the wrong place, so that's going to be more tricky. Yeah, it, so size-wise you can see easily going to fit but because the raspad is designed specifically for well actually for a raspberry pi 4 but the pi 5 is such similar architecture that it fits so these two are opposite so the usbs would be here and the ethernet's here so it all seems to work very well because all of this is the same so same hdmi same USB C, or in the same position but this doesn't necessarily lend itself as well to the raspad but a more custom tablet, obviously because this is so much smaller than a Raspberry Pi uh, and ha only has certain connections on it. And this other board being even smaller, even thinner, uh, but would have to use the display connection cables as opposed to HDMI. So not suitable for this, but definitely for some other tablet builds. The CM5 Nano A or B might be the right choice. So thanks very much to Waveshare for sending me this to test. Hope all this helps. Actually, I felt a bit guilty ending it there because uh, I figured I might as well try it while I've got it open. And I don't need the ethernet cable because the board is Wi-Fi anyway. The ethernet is only so it gives you a pass through. So this is a very rare tablet that supports ethernet. So we've got to give it a go. Pi 5 out. Ignoring the Ethernet cable, USB A cable, HDMI is going to have to go like this. So, mega short HDMI cable, and I've also got HDMI to micro, so that will sort me out for that one. Although, <laughs> we do have a bit of cableage in here, and then we have this adapter. which oh, doesn't, doesn't help the situation. Well, it does help to be able to plug it in, but it makes it a lot bigger. Okay, so now I just need USB-C power in, which is there. And then if I want to power it up, it will be this button. And you can see the green light has come on. We spin it around <laughs> carefully. I think it will hold. I don't want to touch the CPU. I touched the CPU earlier when it was really hot. So you can see Raspberry Pi OS is starting up. Well, it doesn't look like the touch screen's working. But the touch screen is just, oh, <laughs> uh, the touch screen is just, oh, that USB A's come out a bit, look. That's all it is. That might need a restart for the touchscreen to start working again. It's so precarious. There you go. So all up and running. Okay, so hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.